Welcome back to Super Meat Boy. It's time to roll initiative. We're going to talk a little bit more about Super Metroid, um, and then we're going to get into some Dungeons and Dragons stories as well today. Go ahead, Joe. You. Uh... <laughs> oh yeah, I'm not. I'm not in a challenging spot at all right now. Whatever. Um, you yeah, can, no. You can do two things at um, once, can't so, you? Yeah. I would uh, coming down to it. You know, like Super Metroid is obviously a series that has been mistreated recently. Uh, Metroid Prime, I think, was really great when it came to the GameCube. Metroid Prime 2 is okay. Corruption had really great controls, but the game lost its soul. Like, mm -hmm. it was no longer a brilliant Metroid game. It was, it was too focused on the gimmicks of the Wii. Mm -hmm. um, and, Which is uh, a oh. shame. I didn't even play that one, to be honest. Um, there was another, it was like a Game Boy SP one or whatever. The Hunters, yeah. yeah. I, is that I, any I good? That one. I, so that, that's the one that I'm missing out on. But oh, okay. Other M was the biggest defender. Yeah. And it's because... They went with a really interesting angle on in gameplay, you know, no longer a first-person shooter, but with some first-person shooter elements mixed in. Mm -hmm. um, but they took the story in this really bizarre direction, um, and they they kind of destroyed Samus as a character in it because they, they made her this like uh, military like goon that was that wanted to like please her commander. Oh, um, really? Yeah. Was she still sort of? Um... Had had interacted with the Chozo and this had was, the... I believe before. Um, oh, weird. Yeah. So, oh, it was actually was it right after? It was right after uh, Super Metroid. So yeah, she had interacted with the Chozo. Yeah, because otherwise but, she wouldn't have a morph ball, and they can't do a whole game yeah. with her without a morph ball, right? Sure. Um, but uh, oh man, it was just it was really upsetting. So, um, I mean, the thing I think about Super Metroid though is I don't know that it's one of those games, and I'm a I'm a big sucker for story, but. One of those games I don't think necessarily relies on its story so much as its implied story through atmosphere. I agree. Um, kind of like Demon Souls. Demon Souls didn't really have much of a story, but the atmosphere of the game was so thick that you just get, the world had a sense of story. Yeah. Um, and that's I think I, the key. Having not played it but only seen it from others, I think you still get that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think games have become a little bit too reliant on text. Exposition um, block. Yes. It for works sure. really well in games like made by Bioware. But not so well in a lot of other games, especially MMOs, where you have a text block before every quest that no one cares about unless it's really well written. <laughs> yeah. Um, but it's really Journey, sad. Um, on the kind of far end, and this is the game I want you to play, so I won't say too much about it. But mm -hmm. no dialogue. But there are some images that kind of tell a story. But you have to imply the story. Yeah. And it's amazing. Like when I played that game, I was like, I want more games that 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 do this. Like give me this sense of story. Well, that goes right back into what we were talking about on another series. Where we talked about watching the new Mad Max Fury Road. Yeah. Like, so much of that story is delivered through character action and clothing and um, just wear and tear. An, an emotion. Yeah. yeah. It, it's, it's so not done through overt dialogue. There's no voiceover. Oh, I mean, there's voiceover. I'm sorry. There's not. Uh, there is voiceover. But there's no like narrator voice telling the story. There's no um, th there's no need for a, a big villain to say, in the old days this is what it was, and now this is how it is. Right. It's just you trust your audience to learn yeah. through visual and through other experience, and that is powerful. And it is so hard to do right. Man, that movie did it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to gush a little bit more. You know, one whole game series later, <laughs> man, it did it. So, um, uh, but yeah. And so, what I'm really coming back to here is, we have so many brilliant elements to tell to to, to make cinematic sense in video games. Mm -hmm. And Metroid, without dialogue, could do so much with that. I think going through bizarre alien back in the day of Super Metroid. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I feel like it did. Yeah, it totally did it. Um, there was a little bit of text right at the beginning when the doctors failed, but you, sure, know, sure. you don't go and talk to the doctors. The doctors are dead at yeah. the start of the game. So it's the isolation begins immediately, and that's another thing that really... Mm -hmm. uh, the, the sense of isolation, of like really feeling like you're exploring an alien world. Yes. Um, I think they got it in Metroid Prime, but did not get it in any of the later um, entries. Um, so your, your take on it, then, since that's the game you said you would have... If you could reboot... Or, yeah. wait, is it a reboot or is it a continuation? Um, I, I, think, I think we have creative control, so I think I, think I would want to reboot, right? I think, wow, that's big. People would be mad at you. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Um, or maybe maybe don't call it a reboot, just let it stand on its own. <laughs> don't right? call it a comeback. Like, look at Mad Max, right? Like, you could say Mad Max was a is reboot. Is a reboot or not. But yeah. it's not. Like, yeah. 
because because it didn't necessarily need to reference anything. Mad Max still has a backstory. Mm -hmm. Or Max. Um, well, did I come from this way? I didn't come from this way. Um, but, you know, no, uh, the, you. the story stands on its own. And I think that's what it needs to be. Um, oof. So a non-reboot reboot? Right. A non-overt reboot? Oof. Okay, that's what it needs to be. Okay, so... Quickly. Um, yeah. Now the question, the bigger question, I guess, is do I want to go 2D or 3D or some kind of hybrid? And I think part of me just wants to say I, I want 2D again. Like, I, I love Metroidvania and I think I, we don't have enough good old good 2D uh, mm -hmm. games. Yeah. Um, well, we do now, thanks to PC. Thanks but, to yes. But we don't see it outside of the PC as well. I can't as say much. that. Xbox gets them. This game was on Xbox. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, and I mean, even the PS3 has the PS3, PS4 sure. has indie titles. Yeah. Um, some of them. I mean, that game company does 3D, but still, like the like the thing is there for games that are smaller than your typical big. Budget. Yeah, totally, totally. Um, but yeah, no, I, I think maybe it's just nostalgia telling me here, but um, I, I want that 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 big overall that has a sense of scale because uh, you know you can go up, down, left, right. Mm -hmm. um, you kind of lose a little bit of the verticality oh, in. Uh, your girl. <laughs> oh yeah, you kind of lose a little bit of the verticality. Oh, oh. Could have just gone more. Oh. Right. You lose right. the verticality in 3D. Yes, for sure. Um, it can still be there, but your your field of vision is narrowed. Yeah. Um, that's one of the intrinsic things that make 2D gaming so exciting. Oh. Oh. Alright, let's see. So I need to drop a little bit more to the right. Let's do it. Nice. There you go. Yeah. No. I mean. So, you reboot, you go 2D, well, a, a non-reboot reboot, and, uh... No dialogue. Nice. There you go. Um, what, speaking of the visual storytelling, what's the story with these blobs? These meats? Are oh, they meat? Because they're not as meat. They look like ghosts to me. They look like ghosts. Uh, yeah. They're very somber. Yeah. They, I they, actually, I think they do have a little bit of a etherealness to them as well. And I think this whole entire world is post-apocalyptic. Like, this huh. is called the hospital, right? What about this map has looked like a hospital? Yeah, all these broken buildings. The only thing that suggests that it's a hospital is the fact that this place is called the hospital. Nice. I think it's a neat use of yeah. the amount of words that you need to have. Nice. Um, oh, wait, what's going on here? And hospitals always have la death laser lasers. Laser beams, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, um, I, I think those are piles of needles, maybe? All the things that can kill you up above? <laughs> so, to real quick, because I did promise Dungeons & Dragons talk, sure. um, try to sum up your 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 first moment where you were like, I know I love Dungeons & Dragons, I can do mine, and I'll do mine first, do you think, or second? Um, you, I'll do mine first. Okay. Um, because like, it's, I, I got something short and sweet for it. It was the first time that I got to see characterization. Um, like free characterization, you know, not restricted by the game that I'm playing, not restricted by books that I'm reading. I had, I had, and, and I, I wasn't very good at it at the time, but sure. I saw it at least in Jack's, our, our friend Jack, our friend Lenny, their characters, especially Flatu Lance being really amazing oh, in his no. arc. But, um, <laughs> yeah, I forgot about his, his name. name yeah. I'm so impressed you remember that. Oh, that, I, that name will never leave my memory. I've was... named some video game characters after him, actually. Nice. Um, Wait, some video game? You mean some? Some video game characters, yeah. I, like you know, like, oh, like, your oh, your I'll, player. I'll character. think I'll make this MMO character Flashy right, Lance. I gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Um, God, I forgot all about but that. But yeah, that was the first time that I just saw the scope of what could be told from a character, and it was you know this is before I had an appreciation for character development and stories or anything mm -hmm. like that. Um, yeah, I mean, but, uh, I was very young too. It was the first game I was running that that happened in, yeah. and so it was all very new to me. But I knew I loved it. The summer before that game is when I ran, or sorry, I played in my first game, um, and it was not Dungeons and Dragons. It was actually Cyberpunk, but you know, tabletop RPG in a general sense is all D and D and all to a lot of people. Um, but it was it was Cyberpunk. I had a um, cybernetic pneumatic hammer fist, and I. Um, was trying to sort of get a feel for what's going on. I talked very little as a player character because mm -hmm. I didn't... I, I wasn't into this roleplay thing. I just wanted to, you know, to, to, to get to the fights and stuff. Yeah. But it's our first fight. We're in this building, and the building is being described, and it's I recognize it as a place that I currently live in. The dorm that I live in is being described oh, to me. Oh, you did tell me about this. <laughs> and, and so I'm like, wait a minute. If that hallway's there... 
is there a stairwell on the other side of that hallway? And he said, well, yeah, there is. And I was like, is this, insert name of, you know, college dormitory? <laughs> and he was like, well, I mean, yeah, I lived there a couple years ago, so I based it off that. And I was like, holy crap, all right, I know where that stairwell is. My character <laughs> runs this way, goes down one level, comes up on the other side. And, <laughs> and I just had that realization that, like, I wasn't stuck with the map that the game presents you. The game obviously wanted, the game master obviously wanted me to, like, go forward and kick down the door and punch the guy. And instead I realized that, like, I have choices to change this story. Yeah. Granted, that one was maybe a little bit metagamey, but it was also fitting for my character to have potentially scoped out the building before coming in. Um, but it was my first experience. It was the first night of play. And I had this moment where it was like, I can change this story. We're getting shot at by this guy behind this barricade, and we're in a bad spot here, but I can turn it around, come up behind him, and obliterate him. And so I did. <laughs> <laughs> I get there. I throw my first punch at him. The first combat roll I make in a tabletop game. This is a D10 system, so you get like a fistful of, D, uh, of, of dice that have the numbers 1 through 10 on them. And if you get a 10, it's really good on any of them, because you get to roll it again and succeed twice, potentially. Um, and I launch my pneumatic hammer forward. The DM or GM describes... Your fist embeds in the wall behind him. And I'm looking down and I'm like, I've got like four tens here. This is really good. What do you mean I missed? And he says, no, you didn't miss. You punched through him. <laughs> <laughs> and so I had the combat that I needed. I had the story element that I needed. I was sunk in forever at that point. And uh, that takes us past time. So <laughs> this is Instant Replay Live. And uh, I hope you guys are enjoying our stories because we are in full ramble mode. I meet! Yes! <laughs> 